We're still here in Catalina Island with LJ1190. Talk to you just a little bit about rigging from a standpoint of wing heaviness and aileron rigging. Now, some of you have heard the term travel boards, some probably have not, but it's useless to start this rigging session without first beginning and knowing that the ailerons are set properly. They have the proper up and down travel and equally as important that the neutral point is truly where it's supposed to be. And about the only way to do that is to have a, a bracket that fits on the wing in a certain position and comes out here in kind of a protractor shape to let you know where that point should be. Once you get that point, then you can put the uh, digital type um, level on this and see how many degrees it's traveling. But that's useless to us. We know that the starting point is right. So the travel board, or now they make a universal travel board, that's a necessary part of this whole rigging discussion because starting with without the aileron set right, it's useless to try to rig the rest. Now, <clears throat> when you're in flight and you want to make a quick check of, well, how well is this airplane flying compared to what it should or not, the first comment I'll mention is <clears throat> that we really ignore what the aileron and wing tip do together. I know that sounds strange, but this does not enter into the equation. Instead, it all has to do with comparing the trailing edge of the aileron to the trailing edge of the outboard flap. So what I'd love to see in flight is there's absolutely no gap here, and it's the same on both sides. That would be wonderful. Rarely do you find it that perfect. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about spending $1,000 for a rigging job if this is only an eighth or a quarter inch off. But you start getting ones where if it's an inch off, it's going to add significant drag to the airplane and slow you down in the cruise and not give you the optimum handling qualities. <coughs> so today, when we flew this airplane over to Catalina from Phoenix, we were noticing that this trailing edge was just slightly above, maybe a quarter inch or so like that. Now let's run over to the other side. with the other side up this was down just a little bit I may be exaggerating here to show you but we definitely had one up and left down on, on the right now if you're going to do a, a rigging check as a test pilot here uh, nice smooth air without pastures probably what you start to do now is to move the wheel to get exactly the same position later on on both sides so that means this would come up a little bit and that would come down so let's think that through. This airline comes up, this wing is going to be depressed down, vice versa. So if I were to physically take the wheel in the cockpit, turn a little bit to the right to make these line up perfectly, the airplane would start a slight right roll. And that would be called by the test pilots <coughs> right wing heaviness. It has nothing to do with where your trim tab wheel is or the, the trim tab itself. Just ignore that for now. <coughs> but you would have an airplane that has slightly right wing heavy if the ailerons, which we've already determined are set properly, in neutral, cause the airplane to roll a bit to the right. Vice versa, left roll, left wing heavy. Well, if this is going to be corrected, if the airplane has a tendency to go right wing down, right wing heavy, we need to get some more lift on the right side or decrease some lift on the left side. That's where flap adjustments come into play. Now, if we lower flaps, to a minor extent, that adds some drag and slows us down a quarter knot or something. So if there's the possibility to increase flaps, that's advantageous rather than lowering them. So in this case, right wing heaviness, we would want to now <coughs> have the left flaps come up. Well, sometimes there's no capability for that. They're all the way up. If I check here, there's a significant amount of free play, as there should be. And so probably we can adjust these up a little bit and then try our test again. Now, as you probably know, the flaps are operated by jack screws. And when that jack screw connects the flap, it does so with a, a clevis and a bracket there. And if we just turn it clockwise, if we disconnect it from the flap, that's moving the jack screw up or in counterclockwise, screws it out, just like a regular screw thing. So what I'd start here in this airplane is to make what we call a half a round adjustment where the both actuators, outboard and inboard, would be turned, uh, bolt pulled out, disconnect from the flap, half a turn, tighter, bolt back in, see if the flaps still have a bit of free play, and go do another test. And that would probably make this airplane 
fly with the ailerons very close to center. Like I said at the start, if you're only a little bit off, don't worry about it. But the airplanes maybe that's been in a, a landing action of some type or hangar race has had perhaps uh, the flaps taken off and put back on, the ailerons readjusted. There can be some, some major problems show up. Until we get into a good flight test program, we really don't know how we stand on that. Hope that's been helpful. This has been Tom Clements for King Aircraft.